What's up, best friends? My name is Brian Deach, and today I'm going to cover the partnership between Zscaler and CrowdStrike. Obviously, I carry the Zscaler flag, so I'll start off there. We have the Zscaler Cloud. We'll just denote it here as ZS for Zscaler. Uh, switching gears, we have another cloud to kind of introduce right here. And this is going to be the CrowdStrike Falcon Cloud. We'll denote that as CRWD. And we aren't nothing without our customers. So anything kind of customer specific, gonna be the users, gonna come over here, throw them over here in orange. Your users, they're happy, they're working from anywhere. That means at home, Starbucks, abroad, and in the office. And what are they trying to do? They're just trying to get their job done, right? They're trying to go out to the internet Maybe make an Amazon purchase, who knows? Maybe they actually do their job for the day. So we come over here, say you got the internet, maybe they're checking some personal email, maybe they're going out to a SaaS-based application like Office 365, Salesforce.com, you name it. And of course, they, uh, they still have to talk to those legacy applications. Maybe some of those applications have been moved to the private cloud. So I'm gonna throw these all in the same box. So this could be your data center uh, or private cloud. And what does your data center or private cloud have back over there? That's pretty simple. They have applications. We'll call them applications one, two, and three. So now we kind of have the plumbing done right here. Where are the five points actually start? So we're gonna start over here with your work from anywhere person. We're gonna be protecting them, right? You got CrowdStrike running on the endpoint. Heck, you probably even have CrowdStrike run over here on your servers. In addition to that, we're gonna have Zscare Client Connector. And this is really just kind of that steering mechanism, right? And it's gonna start over here uh, with the something I call the Zero Trust Assessment Score. And really it's my agent can come over here and talk to CrowdStrike. Now, even though it begins with the Z, it has nothing to do with me. So zero trust assessment. What does that mean? It's a score based on CrowdStrike Falcon of how this device has been provisioned, uh, the features that have been turned on in CrowdStrike. And let's say that this score is like an 80. I can use this to do some posturing. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, all roads always point to Zscaler which means if a user is going out to internet or SAS, I can use that ZTA score to do different things. So I can be like, hey, listen, I wanna take your ZTA score, and if you're going out to something like Office 365, and that ZTA score is, I don't know, an 80 or higher, you just get that native experience. And if that ZTA score is like a 79 or lower, perhaps I put you into cloud browser isolation. Kind of cool things that we can do based upon that zero trust assessment score, but it doesn't stop right there. I can use that same logic and say, hey, if you want to talk to like application one, maybe your score, we're a little bit lighter on that. It's a 60. Or if you want to talk to application two, it's a 65 or maybe application three is like super secure for whatever reason, and you need to have a score of a 90. We can use that as a device posture in brokering access into the, you know, your internet-based applications and same with stuff at the data center or the private cloud. The second one is some threat intel sharing, and it actually looks like this. You'll go into your tenant in CrowdStrike, and you'll be able to share this information with Zscatter. So we take this threat intel that you select, and we'll automatically synchronize that into the Zscatter cloud. So let's say the CrowdStrike was like, man, that Brian Deach website really stinks. So we're going to block all the users. It's going to immediately come out here, publish that as a known bad thing. And that user, when they try to go out to BrianDeach.com, boom, they're going to be blocked. And that's through that information sharing uh, between CrowdStrike and Zscatter. The next one is gonna be around sandboxing. Now, when we look at this, I wholeheartedly believe 
every single one of your endpoints in your environments should have the CrowdStrike Falcon, whether it's over here, whether it's over here, 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 it doesn't really matter. But I also believe that all cars should have airbags, but I think it's fundamentally more important to block the attack from happening in the first place. So I think we can all agree that if I can block it here, as opposed to down here, over here, further up, the better. Now, that's kind of neat. Now, when it comes to this, it's really sandbox. And when you look at sandbox, you're like, well, Brian, you know, we got it. What's the point? When it comes to ransomware, zero days, and malware, we reject those things like the same way you reject presents from mom's new boyfriend. Like, no thanks, Dale. But joking aside, there's some cool things that I can do. So in this scenario, let's pretend for a second that this user went out to brianbeach.com to pull something down. It was sandboxed here and blocked. How can we help orchestrate that and make it better? So actually, from our UI, we can talk natively into CrowdStrike and say, hey, listen, I'm curious, have you seen this? And what this looks like is we have like this little insights log it says view CrowdStrike endpoint hits. What does that mean? It means CrowdStrike is gonna go over here and start querying all the Falcon installs, right? One, two, three, 5,000, whatever you have going on. Now, when we do that, CrowdStrike's gonna kind of phone back home. This is what I call closed loop remediation. And say, hey, listen, I found three hosts that actually have that particular binary running. So it comes over here, and you'll notice right from the Zscare UI, it says that it's normal, but if you choose to move that to contain, Zscare is gonna tell CrowdStrike, CrowdStrike's gonna come over here, and we'll just pick on application two server for right now. It's gonna go through there and say, hey, we're gonna go ahead and move this from normal to contain, which means that device on your network can no longer talk to anything. True zero trust, boom, like it is completely locked down. It's going to feed that information back over here, and then boom, you're presented in the Zscar UI that that particular device has now been contained. The next one is gonna be around deception. So let's say for a second, <clears throat> we have a user, threat actor, trying to bounce around the network like a dang filled mouse is leaving a path of destruction. That's terrible, right? Maybe they're net the, you know, the next Edward Snowden. What I can do is I can introduce deception, AKA a honeypot. What is that? Think of it like this, like, uh, like how to catch a predator, right? This is the Chris Hansen version of things. And what makes this a little bit unique right here is that that deception honeypot isn't running on your network, at least it doesn't have to. In fact, it's gonna be running in our cloud. And when the user arrives right here, I start to monitor their behavior. And more importantly, what I wanna do is that I find something that is really, truly bad. I create a high fidelity alert. And more importantly, I wanna take that high fidelity alert and send it here in the crowd strikes. So you can do your threat hunting and all that sexiness. So I'll just call it right here, Hi-Fi Alert. Goes directly in there. Allow the good, lock the bad, stop the stupid. And last but not least, probably my favorite thing, in the Zscare world, whether it's users or workloads, we're always gonna be like in between that, but that gateway of truth and we're looking at all things and it's gonna be around XDR. And I'll draw it as a dotted line. So I can come over here and I can do an XDR send. And what does that really mean? I'm gonna give contextualized logs, the user, the device, the application, CASB application, the internet application, applications back over here that the user is trying to see. Contextualized logs that are very, very meaningful that provide a crazy amount of insight. But more importantly, if CrowdStrike is like, oh my goodness, that user, is bad, we need to contain that person. So what's neat about this is CrowdStrike, if you find something bad, I can do an XDR respond, which means I can signal back to the Zscare cloud and say, XDR respond. That user, Brian Deach, 
He's a turd. We don't like turds, right? We want to block him from doing things. And when we do that, essentially what's going to go on is this user is blocked. They can't get out to these internet SaaS-based applications. They effectively have a brick that can do nothing, right? So to sum it all up, we have the zero trust assessment score, leveraging our endpoints to be able to talk, using that as a point of enforcement, going out to internet or SaaS or create different type of verdicts. Same thing with private cloud. Two, you can take your threat intel from your CrowdStrike tenant and feed that into your Zscare tenant. Three, we have the ability to block something in a sandbox, but to take that information and be able to orchestrate and do a contain event. In this scenario earlier, I was talking about that application server two being blocked. Three, if I throw somebody into deception, I can create a high fidelity alert, throw it in the CrowdStrike, get those logs in there so you can do your forensics and do your hunting on it. Lastly, leveraging the XDR integration, since Zscare is the gateway of truth, sending all information, contextualized logs of users and workloads from Zscare to CrowdStrike, and if CrowdStrike finds something bad, respond back over there and contain that user. So with all that said, team, that's my time. Do me a favor, like the video, subscribe, contact your Zscaler person, contact your CrowdStrike rep. I don't care who it is. You should be doing this, and I look forward to talking to you in the future. Have a good one.